I guess really what we'll do is go back to the very beginning. We'll start there and we'll just keep chatting right through until you feel like your story is told. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking the beginning for you was, of course, the realisation that you, you had been put up for adoption and that your mum was not your biological or birth mum. Mm. Start there and tell us about that. Yeah, well, I was 18 and uh, when she uh, told me uh, that I was adopted and it came as a, a great shock, really. And I um, I was going with Michael, who became my husband later on. And because he was so sympathetic, I was uh, leaning on him, really, uh, just... I had a wonderful life mm -hmm. uh, with uh, my adoptive mother and father and they were wonderful parents to me. And yeah. I, my aunt, who was a widow and had no children, uh, also was like another mother. Right. So the fact that I found then that I had a different mother as well, yeah. uh, kind of when I felt very content with what I had. Yeah. And I didn't feel the need really for another <laughs> mother. Um, yeah. And but still, uh, the whole thing was a shock and Michael made it more uh, bearable, I suppose. Yeah, he was a but huge support. He, he was. And tell me, did you ever wonder, like, do I look, did, did you look like your, your adoptive mom or did that ever cross your mind? Was there ever little things? Yeah, well, it did because I was very dark and I, but my mother was blonde okay. uh, originally and uh, my father had black curly hair and I used to think, well, now I got the black straight hair. I should <laughs> either <laughs> be one or the other, either the blonde, the blonde curly hair or <laughs> yeah. what have you. But yeah. um, yes, it did uh, Cross my mind, all right. And I suppose when I did hear it, I kind of felt that there had been uh, things that maybe had been spoken about. Uh, and when I tied them all together, I felt that there was. Right. It made sense. Yeah, it made sense. And tell me, do you think it was very difficult for your adoptive mum to tell you that? Do you think it was a very difficult place for her to come from? I'd say it was, and uh, apparently there was a law passed at, uh, probably just before I was 18 uh, that uh, stated that, uh, they, uh, that the adoption wasn't really, I'm not saying it wasn't legal, but there was some uh, thing else which I just can't remember okay. that uh, came out that... So they somebody had to call around from uh, the uh, adoptive agency, yeah, or that, and uh, that she was aware of that. I feel otherwise, I would never have been told. told. I feel that okay, and uh, that, and I never felt uh, even when I was told, I never felt the need to uh, look up my mother because I have felt I had such a wonderful childhood and uh, being brought up as an only child. And and did it enter your head, oh, I wonder if I'd have brothers or sisters? Or, no. No, nothing. No, I guess you were just so happy and yeah. secure, in the, in, which is wonderful. Yeah. And as we both know, not always the tale in these no. situations. And as well as that, I had wonderful friends okay. uh, from my school, which yeah. I still have some of them that are left. Uh, I still have them. Yeah. And uh, I kind of, they were like my sisters. You're right. Yeah. 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 Where um, where were you raised, Betty? Uh, in Longwood Avenue off the South Circular Road. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I went to the presentation convent. And um, the aunt that was like a second mom to you, did she speak to you about it at all? Or, um, Well, afterwards, naturally, okay. but yeah. never before. before. Yeah. But... Um, no, she was really, uh, she uh, kind of, you could say, adopted me as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because she had no yeah, children, no yeah, family and yeah. uh, that. And there was only uh, my mother and herself and another sister who we lived in England. So they were very close. Okay. And clearly loved you very dearly. Yeah. 
So that was when you were 18. And then, of course, you went on to marry um, Michael. And you had two boys. Yes. And I guess a wonderful, happy yeah. life with um, John, Paul and Michael. And then tell us what came next. Obviously, then an urge to look for your birth mom or your birth family. Um, yes. Uh, well, I uh, was working with uh, a girl, that um, Hilda, uh, who had gone through, we'll say, much the same experience. She was adopted in a different way uh, as well and discovered that her biological father had been ill in hospital before he died and had very, very few people even to visit him okay. and very few people even at his funeral when he did die. And she uh, really nearly had a nervous breakdown uh, thinking that she should have been there or could have been there and would have been there for him okay. uh, if uh, she had looked him up. Uh, she knew who he was, yeah. but she was reluctant to kind of... Uh, enter into his life. And um, so I kind of felt maybe at this stage I was 45 and I felt that I maybe if I left it any longer, that I knew my mother's name yeah. and where she came from. And How did you know that, Betty? Um, well, my mother told me. Okay. Yeah. And was your mum alive, alive at this time when yes. you were 45? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. my mum... It was only died a year before my uh, Mona. Father, my okay, Mona died. Okay. Um, okay. So, so yeah, you knew who she was. And, yes. And, and I guess you were listening to Hilda's story. Yeah. And thinking potentially, would you lose an opportunity? Yeah, that's true. And uh, so I, uh, it was Easter time, and I, um, I decided that I'd look up somebody with the same name. In uh, it's, it was a small place, mm -hmm. and um, I picked a name that I felt could be a relation, but maybe not a near relation. So, tell me exactly what you knew. So, of course, her name is Mona McNally. Did you know both Mona and McNally? Yes, so you knew Mona McNally, Walsh's 10. Yeah, okay, or the Noel, uh, no, okay. Yeah. So, what did you get the phone book? Yeah, okay, brilliant, <laughs> and I. Uh, I decided that uh, I picked out Vincent McNally because I thought it wouldn't be the name. I've just pictured that. I knew that there was, um, I think it was a Joseph McNally mm -hmm. had died prior to that. And my mother mentioned them. Okay. Uh, it was in the will or something was in the paper and she mentioned them. And uh, so I picked Vincent uh, and I rang that number okay. and I uh, spoke to his wife and uh, I said that my mother uh, was trying to trace uh, Mona McNally. Did she lost touch and did she have uh, any uh, name for her, or any place for her and uh, could I to get in touch with her? And uh, she in turn, said, oh, yes, the Murphys in uh, in Valbriggan. And uh, so I dwelt on that until it was July and my children were going down to uh, the Irish school in Valbriggan. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, that was in 19... 81, mm -hmm. and um, I uh, decided I'd ring and see. So I this guess. lady, Vincent's wife, gave you, told you that Mo Mona McNally was now Mona Murphy. Yes. Would you have had um, your dad's name, Jim Murphy, at all? Would no. You, no, you've never knew that at no. this stage. And um, she gave you Mona Murphy's phone number? Yes. And that was oh, well, the no, one. she gave me the name and I oh, looked it up. Okay, okay. She mm. just told you she was now Mona Murphy yeah. and then left you to your own yeah. devices. Yeah. Okay, so now you're going, your sons are attending the Gwell School out in Balbriggan <laughs> yeah. and you knew Mona was out in Balbriggan? Yes. So I uh, rang and I uh, 
eventually got Mona. I think there was a switchboard or something and I was put through to the house. Yeah. And I got Mona and I just asked her if she recalled um, this occasion uh, 45 years ago. And she said that she did. And I, well, I had said my name was Betty, uh, which uh, Elizabeth, but Betty. And um, I said that I'd like to meet her if she'd like to meet me. And she said that she would. Then I subsequently learned that she had to take her uh, heart tablet <laughs> after. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> So, but she covered it well, didn't yes, she? Yes, yeah. So um, we arranged to meet in the hotel in Balbriggan uh, on the following Sunday. And I was going with the children to Balbriggan. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, after that, I met her in the Grand, I think it was yeah, called then. that's right. And... Um, uh, prior to that, like Michael was uh, uh, sitting outside in the car and he, I was inside and he was watching people going by and saying, oh, well, I wonder, would it be that one or the other? Yeah. So I think Jim uh, drove down and let Mona off and uh, we met and it was a bit emotional now and but... Uh, I, there wasn't really tears, but like <laughs> we, she had brought photos and of the family and uh, that. And was I, there an embrace? There was, yeah. And oh, that's lovely, yeah, Betty. Yeah. And how did you feel? Oh, well, naturally, I felt like, you know, uh, that it was just lovely to meet. And uh, then she went on to tell me that um, her husband, Jim, mm -hmm. was also my father, which made it doubly. And she had been telling me, oh no, that was, uh, sorry, before, uh, later on she told me about the children then when she used to ring uh, later every okay. Saturday so night. Never mentioned that she had other children at this point. Well, she had photographs okay, of them. Okay, yeah. And one particularly of my sister, Maura, who looked in a photograph of her wedding and she had her hair done the same as I would do it and she right. looked really like me. But uh, How did you feel, Betty, knowing that you had yeah, all these brothers and sisters? Yeah, it, it was just a lovely feeling because I was brought up as an only child. Yeah. Now, I didn't feel I was lacking because I had all these friends who yeah. were like sisters. Yeah. But I was lacking. Now, I mean, was, when yeah, looking at these photographs, yeah, you could see yeah. this. And it was And lovely. then, of course, finding out that, had had that entered your head, of course, that maybe she was not, no longer with your birth dad or? Well, I didn't really think about him now okay. too much beforehand. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasant so it surprise was a, then. Yeah, a bonus, really. Absolutely. It wasn't it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I guess maybe like that. You, the fact that there was an adoption, you think that maybe he might not have even been in the yeah. picture. Yeah. Well, to think that he very much was yes. and was sitting outside in the car. Yeah, yeah. And it turned out really afterwards that I worked for a seed company, Dennis Coakley, mm -hmm. and Jim... Uh, had uh, a lorry and he used to come and collect seeds. I was on the switchboard and he used to come and uh, collect the seed to, for Darius and Don's um, and he would be at the hatch and I'd be dealing with them but oh. I wouldn't know, of course, naturally that oh he was my goodness. father. But, oh my goodness. Yeah. And so that was the day in the hotel. Did you meet Jim on that day? No. Or? No. But tell me how that day, that meeting, how long did that go on and how did that kind of wind up? For, um, about your husband and her husband sitting outside in the car? No, well, he he, he had gone, okay. I think. I don't know what the story was <laughs> with them. Uh, but just Michael was there and some of the people that were passing by, he was hoping they wouldn't be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, I suppose really maybe... Uh, took force of an hour. I don't really know. Okay. I can't. And how did it end? Or like, did it end in, in the hope to see you again soon or with a definite date? Or? Yeah. 
uh, no, there wasn't a definite date, but we were definitely uh, meeting again. And she uh, said that she would ring me on Saturday. And uh, through the years, really, uh, she rang every Saturday yeah. and she filled me in on what everybody was doing. So yeah. subsequently, I knew more about the family than any one of them would have yeah, known about the sure. whole lot of them. For sure. Because uh, each one had different yeah. things. And Betty, just before we move on to that, did did she say if she'd been waiting and hoping that you would reach out? Like, I'm feeling from what you're telling me that she was very open to this, that, you know, there was no hesitation on her behalf. No, but she was, uh, she did say uh, that the priest uh, that had been involved in the adoption had died very shortly before I contacted her. And she said that was her only contact, but she hadn't So she had begun to lose it. hope. Yeah. Okay, so her, she always had that lifeline, if yeah. you wish, with him. Yeah. He had died and then she yeah. figured this, that was it. There was yeah. no chance. Yeah. So I guess the only way was you reaching out. Yeah. Well, that, she was, she was definitely open to it. And Yes. Yeah. yeah. So then, um, so that day, so when do you remember then meeting? So you began to have really a phone conversation because, of course, you were on one side of this issue and she was the complete other. Yes. No, that went on for kind of a long time. Uh it's hard to put kind of uh, mm. times on it. But they came and visited me at home. In Terranier? Yeah. And they met my mother. Okay. Now, she was a bit mm. apprehensive about mm -hmm. the whole thing. Of course. And I had to be very reassuring uh, to her because um, I wouldn't want, I didn't want her to feel in any way kind of that she was taking a, a back seat when, mm -hmm. because naturally the feeling there yeah. was. Did just, Mona ask you about her? Um, well, yes. I, I mean, I told her that I'd had a very happy life and yeah. that I, you know, didn't really feel uh, the need to yeah. uh, reach is, up yeah. but until now. And yeah. uh, that and so then, um, so when you came away from that day and got into the car with Michael, did you feel really, really happy, relieved? What was your your main emotion? Well, I suppose I was on a high, really. Yeah. And uh, that, and I just left the two kids into the school and we were going back kind of... Childless. Yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, then uh, Mona and Jim went up to the school and they brought up fruit and that to the two kids who didn't know from Adam naturally who they were. <laughs> and did they physically meet them or did they just leave something at reception? Oh, no, they physically ah. met them. How did you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, well, I I kind of, one of, I think it was John was up a tree or something when they arrived. <laughs> and I'd say they would, would have looked scruffy looking because they would never have been yeah. fending for themselves kind of you know they would always be uh, done up yeah yeah I know I and I can see how that would matter to you yeah. but I can also see and I love and appreciate Mona and Jim's eagerness to to yeah. welcome you and, and yours into their yeah. lives yeah. you know which is just a beautiful yeah. beautiful thing so do you remember then so they they came up to you in Terranier was this the next time and I guess the, this is your first time to meet your dad your yes. birth dad yeah mm-hmm and uh, that so um, there were, well, it was really lovely, you know, they and uh, that and they were delighted with me and to see uh, that I, they kind of uh, loved Michael and all like, and he was so delighted for me, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, that so it, it, it was lovely. And they came a few times yeah. now and uh, that they, uh, I know that at one stage uh, we had, uh, Michael, I think, went out and met them at uh, the hotel, the Skylon Hotel mm -hmm. and must have been probably the first time because they wouldn't have known the city, uh, the city so well, even yeah. though Jim would have known it, but uh, 
it all changed yeah. because they had built on places yeah. that he'd known as Court. fields. He didn't yeah. know the area. Yeah. And uh, that. And tell me, Betty, did Mona and Jim tell you their story of how and why they came to put you up for adoption or that experience where she had you? Yeah. Well, of course, Jim uh, said on the way home uh, that it was Mona's mother's fault that I was Fair. adopted. Okay. <laughs> Probably true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, and that he had cycled in to see me in. Uh, uh, Hollow Street. Rotunda. No, not Hollow Street. Rotunda, maybe. Uh, the Rotunda. So he yeah. cycled from Walsh's Town, yeah. North County, Dublin, yeah. in, in Timon, obviously, yeah. and then to see yeah. you too. Yeah. And, and did they have you for long before you were? Over 10 days. That is long. I would have yeah. no idea about these days, yeah. but I would think that. Well, was... that was when my mother got me, when I was christened. Okay. It's 10 days. And um, so was this priest to seem to play a key role? Yes. And uh, that's so. Uh, and when it, when it came, was there any kind of stipulate? Like, did they speak to you about the adoption? How they felt about it, or was yeah. there anything that they? Jim uh, said the only stipulation was that I be called after his sister, who had died shortly beforehand, who was well, Lizzie, but Elizabeth. Okay. And uh, the priest naturally took that on board, but my mother. Uh, my adoptive mother, uh, called me after her two sisters, which was Elizabeth and Anne. Okay. And uh, so the priest hadn't to make any decision so on that. the priest that. was like relieved with that yeah. when he heard that. Yeah. And would they, would, would Moan and Jim have had any involvement in, in who adopted you or did they say no. they wanted you to be no. in the city or near them or they, no. it would have been out of their hands? No, they didn't say anyway. No, it would have been out of their hands, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, they didn't say and did they talk to you about, like, you know, reaching out to that priest again at any point? Or do you think that, did they try to maybe get you back into their life or have you in their life at any point after that? Or Well, they did say uh, that they uh, had made contact at some stage yeah. uh, later and that... Um, the priest said that I was very happy and that I was living in a farm uh, down in Kildare. And uh, they seemed to be happy with that because they okay. were both from farming families. And the fact that uh, I was living on a farm, as they thought, uh, seemed Okay, like, then. Uh, you'd wonder, was the priest telling them what they wanted to hear? You know, yeah. he was clearly trying to reassure them. Yes, because I'm sure at that stage there was no potential for them to take you off your no, adoptive mum no. or dad. Yeah. yeah. But in actual fact, I, I was living in um, um, uh, an apartment in Kildare Street over a solicitor's office. So okay. the Kildare bit of it seemed to be uh, okay. correct anyway, even okay. though it wasn't a farm <laughs> in Kildare Street. <laughs> okay. He wasn't really a stickler for details. <laughs> no. A broad version of the yeah. truth. Yes. Um, and did they speak to you at, about that time or did they say, you know, even about them getting married again? Like, No, they didn't no. mention that at all. But we did meet up uh, kind of a few times. Um, you know, we uh, met up in, uh, they were, had gone on holiday down to Kelly's in Rosslare and uh, Michael and I, went down to Kelly's and had afternoon tea with them there and yeah. went around and took photographs and yeah. uh, that. So yeah. we like... Enjoyed each other's I, company, really. We enjoyed, got to know yeah, each other. Yeah. And you said that you would, you would phone each other every Saturday night. Yeah, well, Mona phoned me because naturally I, she was uh, kind of, uh, would only phone when she could okay. uh, phone uh, well, at a particular time when it yeah. suited her, yeah. because it didn't matter to me what time it was. Yeah. Uh, I was there every Saturday and night. Did she say to you at this stage? So was it was it six children she went on to have after you, Betty? How um, many uh, aunties and uncles have I? <laughs> <laughs> Seven. Seven. Okay. I, I was the eldest of eight. You were the eldest of eight. And did she say to you that she um, 
did not want them to know or did she even yeah. reference that? I know she was very eager to tell you all about I know she told you all about the grandchildren and yeah. you knew all our birthdays and all yeah. our confirmations. Yeah, and yeah. everything. And she uh, sent me photos and uh, yes, and everything like Seamus uh, had all the these activities like his... Uh, Triumphs uh, and wins. Yes, and, and the, the racing in the car and... The fact that he had these operations here, that was before, of course, I came on the scene as well, that he was in hospital there. One of his legs was a bit short. Yeah, and the he other. was a rally driver, of course, yeah. and he cra- the car crashed and he yeah. was banged up a yeah. good bit. Yeah, yeah. But everybody, uh, she told me about everybody, they, right. what they were all uh, doing. And I lived for those conversations <laughs> yeah. and uh, that. So, it, And did she ever reference telling them about you? No, she didn't want to. Did you ask or? Well, naturally, I wanted to meet yeah. them. And uh, that, but she didn't know. Brush that, that uh, off. And yeah. And uh, that, but uh, I wanted uh, my uh, name to be before people. I, I wanted to have a contact, like if she if I wasn't going to meet up with them, I wanted my name to be out there when I did meet up with them, that I wouldn't be a stranger to them. Yeah. So everywhere we went away a lot and every time we went away, I sent back cars from Betty, Michael, John and Paul okay. and uh, just kept that up. And for her birthday, I sent flowers and when she was 70 and uh, that I... And Michael went down at one time and he had painted this picture and he brought it in uh, to her now. And uh, Seamus, uh, Michael was driving a high ace van yeah. and Seamus came to inquire, like, who would be dry, who'd be there? Of course. Well, you and can imagine he wouldn't recognise the fan. Yeah. So he was actually speaking to Michael. No. Okay. He didn't oh, he said him. to his mom later yeah, who was here yeah. in the high eight. I don't, can't remember the yeah. explanation, but anyway, she did have to, she did put the picture up in the house and it was the mountains of Morn. Okay. And uh, that, but Michael was on his way to Dundalk with visiting uh, people. Yeah. And uh, that, so uh, uh, we, the, the, the whole time we were, in contact, but naturally it didn't feel enough for me. Yeah. But, uh, and kind of Michael kept, you know, he would be saying all the time, kind of, you know, that uh, you should, that they'd only be delighted to meet you. Of course. <laughs> From his point of view. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, yeah, it just was obviously something that, she, a stumbling block that she could not get over herself. Mm. Yeah, and you were saying to me that um, she did say that she would leave a letter to yeah. explain, yeah, who who you who you are, and I can understand from your perspective if your name was about so yeah. like that. Yeah, she doesn't have it. Oh, you're Betty, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, but then you were saying she actually had cut your name out of the card. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I it sent. Uh, well, I don't know whether it was it was out of the birthday cards okay. anyway. I don't know whether it would have been out of the other. Card yeah. now or not, yeah. but um, because I sent a lot, a lot of them over the years. Yeah. It was kind of nine years before um, I met them, yeah. and so over that time, uh, it, it, there was a long time yeah. in between. And during that time, a story I'd heard and and I really really enjoyed. So you would obviously, if you were going off here, there, and everywhere, you'd be on a Saturday, be telling yeah. um, Mona all about it. And then tell us about the time that you met Richard Harris. Right. Well, I was over my in London for the first time in Heathrow now. Mm-hmm. Um, myself and my friend went over to another friend's, who the three of us worked together, and our daughter got married in London. And we went over to the wedding. And when we were coming back, uh, we were in the airport. We saw Richard Harris mm-hmm. speaking with these two people. And uh, I always had the camera around my neck and we asked somebody, Hilda and I asked somebody, a passerby, if he'd take a photograph of Richard Harris and we'd stand him beside him because he was busy 
chatting and he didn't see us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got this photograph of uh, Richard Harris and uh, which included these two people that he was speaking with and uh, Hilda and I. And he, uh, on uh, the following Saturday, we came home on the Tuesday and on the following Saturday, I was saying to Hilda, to Mona that I uh, was in good company at the airport mm -hmm. because uh, we saw Richard Harris. And uh, she said, oh, uh, Noel, who is my brother, and his wife, Carmel, uh, they were in the airport speaking with Richard Harris. And, of course, it turned out that the photograph uh, included Noel and Carmel, whom I'd never met at this stage. Uh, and wow. uh, yeah, So, so your that, full brother is inches from you. Yes. No more than his father before at the, yes. um, the desk in work. Yes. And you didn't even know. No. no. And yeah. uh, that... So, and what would did Mona, did Mona say when she seen the photo? Yeah, well, of course, naturally, she was amazed. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> For sure. But uh, it didn't tempt her to, <laughs> tempt her to, <laughs> to say it to Noel. <laughs> to spill the beans, <laughs> unfortunately. But I had also seen Noel again. Uh, I think it was after that. Um, uh, that was in uh, 1994 that we met Richard Harris. But, uh, 1984, it would have been. 94. No, Nana, our Mona died in 89. All right. So it would have been the 80s. Uh, 74. 74, sorry. okay. 74. That again. 74. Okay. And uh, then uh, uh, Noel was running in the marathon. Yeah. And uh, I went down to uh, the green, Stephen's green, mm -hmm. and I saw, I knew, I don't think I knew his number. Okay. And I saw him passing by. I, I, it was most, I hadn't seen him at the airport. Of course, I didn't see him really him. at the yeah. airport then. But I knew him then and I shouted, well done, Noel. And he saw me, uh, you know. No, yeah. Betty. Yeah. He kind of saluted you, yeah, acknowledged you. Yeah, he acknowledged me. Wow. Because <laughs> he told amazing. me afterwards that he, he saw me. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, so then, so th that was in 1981. Is that when you said that you reached out to Mona? Yes. And then, of course, 1989, um, Mona passed away very suddenly. Tell us about how you found out about that, given the fact that at this stage, nobody knew you existed other than Mona and Jim. Yeah. Well, uh, prior to that, uh, my brother, mm -hmm. Sean, died. That's right. 84, 86, was it? Yeah, I'm not sure, sure. now. But uh, we, we didn't know, I don't know whether I, no, I didn't see that in the paper. It was Mona's I saw in the paper. Um, I didn't, uh, uh, Mona must have told me yeah. about uh, uh, Sean dying. So Michael and I went down on the Sunday afterwards and left a wreath on the grave and uh, that. But uh, he... Father Tange married us yeah. in 1958, Michael and I, and uh, he also was in Balbriggan. And he also, Michael had a shop in Terenure mm -hmm. village and Father Tange had, at this stage, moved up and he was canon uh, Tange at this stage. He had moved up to Terenure. He was in the south, on South Secular Road when we got married. He was in Balbriggan after that. And then he was, uh, he gave me a mass. He said a mass for Sean then uh, in Terenur. Like it was all the different wow. uh, things. That, yeah. yeah, for sure. So then uh, Mona, uh, I, I rang her on the Tuesday. She was going on Wednesday morning. To Lourdes, yeah. and um, your mother, mm -hmm. Monica, yeah. uh, was going over to do her nails okay. on the Tuesday night. But I was speaking with her then, but it, as well, I think it was after she got her nails done or she was expecting Monica, Monica to come and do the nails. And she went off on the, uh, the following morning early and she subsequently 
died in Lourdes. And uh, that's but, right, died suddenly on the Sunday. Yes. Saturday night, Sunday morning of a yeah. heart attack. Yeah. And um, so uh, I kind of read it in the paper then. So that naturally was an awful um, shock. Obviously, Betty, you checked the deaths in the paper. Was that something you were doing ever thinking, like had that entered your head? If anything happens, no. you or, or no. Jim, I'm not going to hear about it. Um, I, I don't think I, it would, but... This was a, a notice in the paper okay. from Murphy's. Right. They, they, they the were business. closed yeah. because of this. Or Anyway, I did see it because there was nobody else to ring me kind of yeah. about it. You and must have got such a shock, yeah, Betty. An awful shock. Yeah. Because so, at this stage, you were good pals. Yes. You, she was oh, in your yes. life a long time. Oh, yeah. and Nine years. And as I say... Uh, and, if, uh, well, a few different, we, it wasn't that we met up that often mm-hmm. uh, because it wasn't convenient. And then uh, Jim didn't want to be crossing the c- city mm-hmm. then because there was all uh, the bypasses and things like that all Being happening. built. Yeah, so that he was conscious of that. Yeah. So, um, uh, anyway... Um, you seen the debt, obviously, then oh, you spend the funeral the debt, arrangements. Yeah. And so uh, we, Michael and I, went to the funeral and um, your, we saw your dad there. Mm-hmm. And he, Jim wasn't at the funeral because he was ill. Yeah. And um, your, prior to that, we went to the church the night before. Okay. And... I was shaking hands with everybody and I said this with Betty and Michael and your mum, I think it was your mum, yeah. said, oh, they're mummy's friends, uh, they, uh, Betty and Michael. So they knew their name. Yeah. And uh, that, so I think they either felt that I met up in Jersey or I don't I know. I think it was Butlins. Well, I was never in No, but I okay. think that could have been the reference that oh, right. maybe Mona said. Yeah. Maybe if someone did see your name. I remember hearing that at the time that oh, was right. a friend from Butlins. Oh, right. And yeah. um, I guess they would have known where you were from. You could have been from Gormanstown. You yeah. just knew Betty and Michael. Y- yes. Yeah. Well, and when you came out to the funeral, were you kind of secretly hoping this, this is it now? You know, I really want to... Yeah, I didn't really... F- I wasn't going to do... Uh, to say anything, but you weren't not going to. No. Yeah. So, um, fr- your my dad, Francis, Francis, your dad yeah. uh, came up to me and said that they knew about me. Okay. Uh, of my existence now, yeah. I think more than anything. But maybe your dad knew a bit more because apparently he used to post things to me. Yeah, and I guess my dad would have been very intuitive. Yes. And I'm th- from what I remember, he definitely knew there was something. He knew you were more than just a friend. Yes. And I think that maybe my granddad or Jim, um, your biological dad, may have said a few things when, you know, he might have been on medication and been a little bit kind of high. But definitely dad had been alerted. Yes. To it. Yeah. I don't think dad was awfully surprised when he seen you and met you. Yes. And um, as well as that, from the time that I met them, which there was nine years uh, they every Christmas they sent me uh, twenty pounds first in uh, prize bonds because apparently they gave every family because uh, when as families grew they weren't given individual presents yeah. to them and so I was among the people that got the twenty <laughs> pounds prize bonds as well. Yeah. And Francis must have posted them. Probably bought them as well. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was probably giving the money to go in and get yeah, them. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so back up to the church on the night before the funeral, um you you were shaking hands and of course yeah. Monica and Francis, my mum and dad both acknowledged. Yes. Yeah. And um uh, that so that kind of we went home then after okay. that so the following morning we went to the funeral mm-hmm. and that's when your father came over and uh, said that they knew uh, about me and they uh, 
that uh, Seamus also knew and uh, that they um, were having a meal in the milestone and they would have a separate room or something and meet up. Okay. So I um, I didn't know where the milestone was, of okay. course, even. But anyway, I got there, Michael and I. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, they, um, we, I met up with Maura first, I think, in the toilet. And she couldn't believe, kind of, that. So uh, what, well, tell me what happened when you met Maura in the toilet. Well, she... Um, Said, who are you? <laughs> yeah. And she thought I was from AA for some a A yeah okay <laughs> well it had connections okay <laughs> not that I looked as if I belonged to the okay. <laughs> and um seeing as I don't drink <laughs> <laughs> but um anyway uh, she uh, kind of uh, wanted to know kind of how I was uh, connected then kind of really uh, I said I still said it was a friend of uh, her mother and uh, and she said, "No, I must have said that her mother was my mother because she said, "Well, who was your father then okay, so uh, then at that stage, I mean kind of I knew that it was Jim, so uh, she kind of uh, and Michael was waiting outside the toilet, thinking yeah. that I'd got lost in this place where he was standing and knew nobody yeah and <laughs> um we then uh, went in and had a meal, so nobody, neither Maura or I ate anything because Maura wanted to know everything about what yeah. had happened over the years. And and did that meeting, you'd said that Francis had said they were going to have a meeting in a different room. Did that even yeah. occur? Well, it did after the meal. Right. Um, it was... Um, uh, well, it wasn't quite in a different room, but it was to the side there. Uh, but uh, everybody, he told the girls first, the lads were kind of at the bar, I think. And uh, then he, he um, I think it was Seamus, of course, that uh, told the girls. And they were all hugging me and kissing <laughs> me and everything. Now, it really was lovely. Really? I mean, yeah, it was lovely. And from that was um, September. And uh, from that time, I uh, was working in Glasnevin and I would go down every, uh, to see Jim every Wednesday. I worked up flexi time and I'd go down every Wednesday and Saturday uh, to to see them, and did you go up to Jim on the day of the funeral because he wasn't there? Did no? Well, yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the funeral. Um, yes, I went back to the house after the funeral, and Jim couldn't let me out of his sight. Anyway, oh. he had. I was sitting on the side of uh, an armchair, and he he wouldn't let me go. Kind of, I was there with him, and one of the cousins from Limerick. Uh, came along and he says, this is my eldest daughter. Oh, and, uh, yeah, and um, uh, I it never was Jim. He wanted to kind of acknowledge me, but yeah. Mona just didn't, couldn't bring herself to yeah. say it. And I yeah. understood that. Yeah, as a woman, uh, I did yeah. too. And I didn't. But however, the uh, the cousin, which I can't remember his name, uh, he said, oh, I've had too much to drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just it seemed uh, too much for him to take in. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I uh, kind of subsequently went home then and uh, Seamus uh, rang uh, later and they I was at the hairdressers and uh, Michael answered the phone and Jim wanted to know, could I go down again immediately? Oh. And... Uh, Michael didn't know the hairdresser's name. It was in our house, you okay, know, that I used yeah. to get my hair done. And Seamus kept ringing. And like he said, the father was going mad that he wanted to know when I'd be down oh. and all this. And uh, anyway, eventually we made contact. And But I had my aunt 
living with me who was blind and it wasn't that I could only go when Michael was available. Yeah. And uh, that, so um, anyway, it was kind of all really lovely. From that moment. Uh, from that moment on. And, you know, clearly Jim's eagerness to have you there and to have you in the family. And, you know, obviously we all know it's an absolute shame that Mona didn't get to witness that. Yes. Um, but I, I guess, you know, we have to hope that she played uh, and she obviously did play a huge hand acting part in it. Yeah. Um, and um, I mean, you literally came into the family at that point, like as if like like the way Jim said, this is my eldest daughter and where is she? Can she come back? It's like you were yeah. always there from that yeah. moment on. Yeah. And this was true. And uh, then he was he only lived till December. It's 15 so weeks, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. After he passed away. Yeah. And he was in hospital uh, during uh, that time. Mm. And um, he I he wasn't that ill. Like, I mean, he, I went to visit him. Oh, no, it was prior to that I went to visit him. When they knew about me, but nobody else knows before okay. Mona died. And I, my son, Paul, um played cricket mm -hmm. and he I brought him from school and he was in his cricket uh, outfit and Jim was so delighted because he'd been a great cricketer and yeah. all his family and to this day they're all involved in the cricket yeah and yesterday I think yeah. they Ireland won that's like right Ireland yeah. Won. yeah and but none of his grandchildren no his other brother's children yeah. all played but none of Jim's grandchildren no. played. And here was this out of the blue, yeah. this grandchild <laughs> turning up. In his cricket gear. <laughs> in his cricket gear. <laughs> so if he didn't so, love you like his own, from, he yeah. did from that moment on. <laughs> yeah. So um, then, as I say, uh, the Wednesday and Sunday, uh, I go down uh, to him until. And he did you feel at this stage now that Mona had passed away and clearly Jim was so eager to have you there yeah. with him? Did you get to bond with him on a whole new level? Of course, in his own environment as well, yes. in his home. Yeah. Well, this was true. And he told me, you know, how much he loved Mona. That yeah. was one and he really. Uh, did and he told me, you know, he went over things when they were young and. Uh, not so much about kind of me and but Mona and himself and uh, that he he really loved her so much like he kept talking about it uh, all the time and um, so it was lovely to hear that yeah you know and uh, so it's really then of course it came as a shock then Jim dying so quickly after that. And yeah. uh, so then uh, after Jim died, uh, then uh, everything that happened after that, I was involved in. And uh, Noel uh, had a, a little girl. She was the only one born, uh, the last grandchild mm -hmm. born after uh, I had met them. And I am her godmother. Yeah. So uh, that was lovely. Yeah, it was, I mean, obviously to have had um, another grandchild and for yeah. you to have been there for all of yeah. that. Because, you know, as a family, we are all so incredibly close. Yes. And um, then for you to be Andrea's godmother yeah. was really special. Yeah. Like there was no that day on the mar running the marathon and you saluted him and wished him luck and he acknowledged you. And little did we know you'd be his next baby. He probably at that point would have said, no, I won't be having any more kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then to, for him to go on, have another baby and then for you to have been her her godmother. Yes. And I remember even for myself, my, my Nana would have been, Mona, of course, would have been great for sending us all birthday cards. And I can see how you guys would have communicated so much via letters and cards because it, it was at that time as well. Yeah. There was no emails, etc. Yeah. But she would have wrote a lot. And... I remember um, my sister's birthday is November, so Nana died in September. And the first birthday was Linda's. And a card came through the door for Linda. And I got such a shock because it was Nana's handwriting. And of course, Nana had passed away weeks earlier. And I was thinking, did she write this before she died? And even though she died suddenly, maybe she knew she was going to die. And I ran in and to Mam and I said, like, oh my God, it's a card from Nana. 
And Mam and Linda opened it up, and of course, it was a card from you. Oh, but right. your handwriting is mm. a replica mm. of Nana's and Mo- yeah. Mona's handwriting. Yeah. And uh, I had sent on, I don't know whether it's the same uh, time, but it's certainly while uh, Mona was away in Lourdes, I had sent on um, a, a gold cross pen uh, to Jim for his birthday. But I didn't uh, send any, uh, I didn't have anything with it just in the box. Okay. But of course it was addressed. And they thought that it was from Mona, from Lourdes yes. for Jim. And they would have, of course, yeah. because literally the handwriting is uh, replicated. Yeah. Um, it's identical. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So then I guess, you know, Mona passed away in September 3rd and then Jim December 15th, only a few short weeks later. Then began this beautiful relationship with your siblings. Yes. And that was really special. Yeah. And uh, we met up very regularly, Mm -hmm. kind of uh, at least once a month, but maybe more often if things were happening. And um, because I didn't drink and uh, my siblings did, (laughs) it was very convenient to... uh, to be the taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> Betty, I'd like to think it was more than that. <laughs> of course, but yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, it was an added bonus. Added I'd bonus. Oh, <laughs> I'd say they were like, you'd know which one wasn't rare with us, <laughs> the one not drinking. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course. And I mean, like, obviously, I, I don't know if if your three sisters, which of course my aunt's mom, well, my mom, Monica, Rita and Maura would have been as close, as well connected and as social had you, Betty, not come into their lives because I feel like maybe an extra effort was made yeah. on that behalf. But as a family, I feel that we all became so much closer and yes. you ladies, the four of you together yes. as a unit became yeah. so much closer, yeah. even then to making the Christmas puddings. Yes. Which oh, was a yeah, huge that, tradition. Yeah, and that was because... I was brought up as an only child and my mother was a great cook mm-hmm. and but everything appeared and I didn't have hand actor part <laughs> in doing them. <laughs> yeah. But I was involved then in doing the Christmas pudding. So yes, as you say, which I had never done before. And it, it all seemed, it was just wonderful, a wonderful experience. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I really was so, so happy. It was yeah. uh, Opening a, a very, very, uh, how could I say, a chapter in my life that I never thought that I would have. Yeah. Because Michael belonged to a big family and they were very close. Yeah. And I, well, while I would have been close enough to some of them as well, I really, it was just so lovely to have my own family. Yeah. And uh, that, and uh, my mother had died. Uh, a year before uh, Mona died okay. and uh, just a, a funny thing when I rang to tell uh, Mona no yeah I have to feel to get the context here um, yes when I uh, rang to tell them that to tell Mona Jim that my mother had died mm-hmm. and I said she was a wonderful mother and Jim, of course, immediately piped up and said, well, you have another wonderful <laughs> mother here. He wasn't letting me get no, away with that. No. <laughs> what I'm getting from, if, if it was down to Jim, you would never, ever have left. You yeah. know, they never would have let you go. And yeah. um, it's certainly what I'm feeling from him. Yeah, well, maybe not. But certainly he would have uh, probably, we would have met up yeah. sooner after I made contact if it had been. Yeah. Uh, for Jim, but yeah. I I always felt, even though Michael couldn't see it really, but he always felt they'd be all so delighted to have me and include Mona, which I'm sure she would. Yeah. But she just couldn't bring yeah. herself. Yeah, to. you know, a woman's heart, I guess, you know, yeah. and I think it's very different and being a mother than being a dad, you know, yes. and who knows, we'll never know. And it yeah. has died with her, whatever yeah. it is that was, yeah. um, that she was feeling. Yeah. But at the same time, there is a huge amount of love here. Yes. And, yeah. um, you know, there's really no, no regrets because once she did depart, there was a family there with open arms. Yes. 
Well, that is very true. Yeah. And uh, everybody was just so welcoming. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there was nothing like, I mean, it just, I fitted in so yeah. well. And, and Michael. Yeah, very yeah. much so. And the boys. Be, and yeah. the boys. And uh, that, uh, because my mother, uh, I mean, the boys never knew mm. until uh, my mother kind of died that uh, she wasn't, uh, you know, yeah. that their biological grandmother because yeah. her, they were her only two grandchildren, yeah. naturally. And yeah. they loved her yeah, to bits. Of course. And because she was in the house with them mm -hmm. uh, for 21 years. Mm. She came just after John. Uh, my father died six months before I, we got married. Okay. And uh, my mother came to live with us after John was born then. Yeah. And though we were seven and a half years waiting for John to arrive, <laughs> you know, we were a long time married before John yeah. arrived. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was, uh, they were her grandchildren and I wouldn't have, uh, you know, yeah. uh, ever done anything. Yeah, which was nice, which was lovely. Lovely yeah. to have given her that. And the boys didn't miss out. No, no, um, they did not. You know, even at the time, 1989, when you came into the family, if you wish, it was probably the best time. Yes. You know, when I look at my my mom and her brothers and sisters, they were all still very young, yes. very healthy. Yes. Good times, as yeah. you know. Yeah. It doesn't always, well, life, it doesn't always stay that way. And of course now it, it's not as we've lost, um, you know, two of them again since. Yeah. And um, But yeah, you got the best of us. You got yes. the best of the Murphys. Yes. And all the uh, celebrations were yeah. taking place. Weddings. The, the and weddings and the 21sts. And, yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It was really lovely being yeah. involved. Yeah. Uh, with like the eldest grandchild was probably 20. Yes. Uh, Jill, Jill or Carl, isn't it? Carl. Carl, yeah. Well, of course, your boys would have been old, older. No. No, they're younger Carl than Carl. is the eldest okay. grandchild. Yeah. Okay. Which Maura was delighted with. Okay. <laughs> we let her have was. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, yeah. And then the boys and then Jill. Would yes. that be right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Jill somewhere in between them. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, you know, weddings hadn't even started really. No. And um, yeah, we we had some great times. I mean, yeah. for me, I was 11. I just don't even remember life without Auntie Betty in it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but um, yeah, absolutely. And tell me, like, when you look back, Betty, do you have any, any regrets, anything that you wish went differently? How, how, what, how do you feel about it now at this stage in your life when you look back? No, I certainly... Uh, even the fact that uh, the nine years went by without meeting up with them, it, it all just slotted in. And then the year after Mona's uh, uh, death, uh, we, the four of us, uh, your mum and Maura and Rita and I, went to Lourdes uh, okay. on the same pilgrimage as your mum had been on. And that really was magical. Really better. It just was wonderful because uh, the aunts were on the same. I was meeting the extended family, which I would, even though I had later kind of would be going to the different houses mm. later on. But at that stage, I really probably hadn't met up mm. with any of them. And it just, it just seemed like a miracle, really. Mm -hmm. And the same priest was running the pilgrimage yeah. and... Um, we went up and saw the plaque uh, on the grave uh, there, yeah. as well as, of course, the yeah. gravestone at home. But the, there is a plaque there. And uh, everything just, it, it was just a wonderful time. Yeah. I, I just couldn't, I can't think of anything better. Like my life just changed for, completely by meeting you yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, everybody, the children and everybody, you know, we went to the zoo together. Yeah. We went to various different things that, you know, which are lovely memories mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. And at that stage, I was into taking photos. So I was taking photographs of everything, like the yeah. <laughs> weddings and yeah. <laughs> 
so many. I was the photographer nearly for all these things because mm -hmm. I just wanted all these memories. Yeah, 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 to have. And you know, you spoke there about meeting the extended family, which would have been, of course, um, Jim's um, sisters and brothers and Mona's sisters and brothers. I'm curious to know: Did they ever know Mona was pregnant when she was obviously pregnant on you? Like, how did nobody know in that of that era generation? I think um, some of, uh, one maybe, of Jim's uh, relations did know uh, a sister and her husband kind of did know uh, something about it all right. But I think in general, I don't think any of Mona's did. Really? Even Cora, let's say, no. who was so much younger, she had no idea? No, I don't think it, and they did, no. And did did she stay, like obviously she had to move out of her home if she was pregnant so that nobody She could came to Dublin, uh, really, and I don't know if she stayed somewhere in Dublin. And uh, that, but I don't think it's, uh, Jim's sisters were in Dublin, but I don't think it was with any of them. Okay. I think, uh, I'm not sure now who yeah. it was with. Yeah. But um, I know that, that, uh, I suppose, I mean, it was very different then. Mm. And I mean, I listened to all these adoption stories because of naturally the interest that mm. I have. And I have to say that every bit of my story, I feel, had a, a happy ending, a nice ending, whereas some don't. Most, yeah. And um, Most don't. I don't know, but however, like sometimes the mother don't want to know, but yeah. I know that uh, Mona did want to know yeah. and uh, that, but she just, there was something stopping her just uh, doing this. She didn't want to feel that she had kind of let people down or what it was. I don't know, really, because it was a great... The fact that the mother was a widow and uh, had a, was running a farm and uh, like things were hard at that time for everybody. Yeah, uh, it was in 1936. Like it was really they were hard times. Yeah. no matter what you had. And uh, was it Mona's mother was a widow? Yes. Okay. Yeah, her husband yeah. died in 1932, and I was born in 1936. But uh, so. It kind of really was very hard on them. It would have been kind of peak um, laundrette time as well, wouldn't it? Would it? You know, the yeah, yeah but thankfully that oh, never no, came into no, it. No. Um, that's what I mean by like, you know, there's so many tragic stories yes. where these things are concerned. But all I get from your story is positive. Like yes. even from the moment you reached out to, even from the moment you reached out to Vincent's yes. wife. You yes. know, it was positive yes. right through to meeting her in yes. that initial time when yes. it was a warm embrace and then yeah. her and Jim going up to the kids in Balludry. Yeah. Um, to your many meetings and phone calls throughout the year, yeah. years. Well, it was oh, definitely all very, very uh, positive. Now, there was nothing. Um, and uh, it just, as I say, it opened up a whole new uh, everything for me. And even... Uh, like Michael enjoyed everybody's company too. Yeah. And I think you all remember he was in the ski club. He used to. Oh, he teach was brilliant with us, brought skiing. us all um, okay. skiing. And he had so many different faculties to his yeah. life. You yeah. know, he was a fascinating character. And yeah, as were the boys, it was great to have them as our cousins. For us, it was so exciting. And yeah. in fact, your guys were from Terranure, like the other side of the city as well. Yeah, um, it was it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. and our times out out in Kiltearn and skiing and yeah, that yeah, it was all uh, it was all lovely. Like there was it was all just so positive, and so I definitely have uh, no no regrets at all yeah. uh, about anything, and even the fact that it had gone on for the nine years, I I don't feel. Uh, that I missed out because I made up for it uh, later. Yeah. And uh, when it was probably easier for me to be, when my mother and my aunt had died, they yeah. 
were living with us for 30 years between the two of them. Yeah. But uh, they um, uh, had passed on, so I had time to mm. uh, really get to do the things that I wanted to do uh, with the family and uh, and every bit of it was lovely. Yeah. Fabulous. And, you know, it really is a lovely, lovely story. And, you know, I, I guess it was important for you today as well. How do you feel now, this this side of our recording? How do you feel having just really kind of archived or documented it all and, and spoke about it? Yeah. Well, I, one thing I just have to say mm-hmm. too, which to me was just wonderful. It just showed how I immediately was one of the family. Mm-hmm. Um, the Christmas after meeting up, mm-hmm. I think it was that Christmas anyway, uh, Seamus uh, had sold property and that, and he uh, sent me and all my siblings uh, a, 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 a hamper and 10,000 euro. Uh, we all got and I got too so wow. I thought that was lovely you were a Murphy I was Murphy a Murphy. true and true <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely and yes so it, yeah as I say it was just a lovely lovely story and uh, everybody that I've told it to yeah. has also felt that it was one of the best stories they'd ever yeah. heard and uh that's so I'm um, absolutely so so happy. Yeah, to belong. absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, you know, me too, <laughs> because it's a wonderful family, and we're so blessed to have each other. And all there's ever been is love. Yes, you know, yes. You know there's never been. As I've decided now that we're actually the unusual ones, you know, when you see so many families that have fallen out over the years like that over over money or yeah. alcohol or all these things. But yeah. We never have. I've never known yeah. either of my parents to ever have a crossword with any family member. And yes. there's no front door I couldn't just open and walk through yeah. and not feel at home, you yes. know. And um, even now about my parents passed away, I still feel so connected like yes. here we are today, you know. Yes. But it is, we, we have a lot to be grateful for. And I guess that comes from Mona and Jim and yes. what they gave us. Yes. Well, this yeah. is this is true. Yeah. And I'm just so happy to be to belong. Yes. To be a Murphy <laughs> and a Mooney. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Betty, thanks so much. Well, I'm delighted to have done this. I'm really thrilled. Um, we've been meaning to do it for a while. So um, yeah. do you feel like we've we've... Got everything that you wanted to capture? Yes, I think so. I can't uh, think of uh, anything more. Um, uh, no, I think I can't. Uh, just um, uh, all the things that I uh, I'm, I'm so delighted about the 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 uh, cricket with Jim because himself and his brothers like they've they were kind of famous. Yeah. Uh, cricketers. Yeah. And it just did make a difference to him, you know. Yeah. And uh, just other things like that. I also visited Mona in hospital and before I met everybody else. And she was terrified that somebody would come in that I look so like the family. I couldn't see that. Yeah. uh, That I look so like that anybody would know that I was but yeah. like she felt it. Yeah. And uh, that. And Even today, Betty, I was 11 when um, Mona, my nana, passed away. And having lunch with you today, I felt like I was sitting with her. Everything mm-hmm. about you looking, the way you talk, the way you eat, even this, how how the speed that you eat. Um, <laughs> honestly, I, I looked at you so many times and it was just like sitting and having lunch with my nana. And that's how it felt for me. What's many, many years, what, 30 years, yeah. 30 two years, three years later. Yeah. And it was like yesterday. Yes. So you are the absolute image. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Very much And so. another thing uh, funny that uh, occurred when I went down to the house in, in Valbregan, um, she had all these uh, mugs belong to uh, Maxwell House. Yeah. And I had saved them as well. <laughs> The coupons. <laughs> the coupons. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it just seemed, uh, yeah. you know, imagine. Yeah. And I think uh, I said to you there 
about the birthdays. A lot of us had birthdays in March mm-hmm. and uh, they apparently all the birthdays were celebrated on the 17th of March and uh, they uh, because of Lent yeah. and you'd be saving up your sweets and you couldn't have cake and everything. So they all had the, the same birthday on the 17th of March and I was in Dublin and I was celebrating my birthday, which is the 20th of March, on the 17th of March as well, for the same reason. Yeah. That you couldn't, you couldn't have the, even have a party. So you'd have the party and able to eat cake on the 17th of March. Yeah. And like all these things uh, slotted in. Yeah. I mean, there were so many of us born in March. Yeah, yeah, the connection. You know, and even and the next generation. Yeah, I'm March. Yeah, yeah. we've loads of March, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And Jill's yeah. children are March yeah. as Grace. well. And uh, that's so, there were a lot of things that uh, kind of, uh, over the time, uh, that seemed to be a coincidence. So anyway, it's a lovely coincidence. Yeah, uh, for sure. Mm. That's great, Betty. I think we will leave it there. I think we have it all. Oh, I'm gosh. I'm delighted with that and how all that went. Oh my God, we're, we are talking nearly an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Super. Goodness.